Hi everyone, it's Sarah Nissen from sarahnissen.com. I wanted to come today to talk about high sensitivity. Um, one of the things that I've dealt with my entire life without even knowing about it until recently is that I'm a highly sensitive person. And I read um, Elaine Aaron has a wonderful book called The Highly Sensitive Person. And I read that book probably, oh, a while ago. And then I read it and I was like, yeah, that seems kind of like me. But then kind of was in denial about it. Didn't really want to associate with that label. Um, when in essence, there's no denying it. <laughs> I can't. I can't exactly deny something like that. And so when I had my son, I've, you know, tried to um, find answers for him throughout his life. Um, and it turns out that he's taught me so much about myself and about my high sensitivity that I want to help others learn about it more. Um, and so I'm going to be helping families with highly sensitive kids. And what I've learned, come to learn is that in other parts of the world, besides the U S highly sensitive person is actually more well known than here, the term. Um, and people are learning about it here as well. So what I've come to realize is that highly sensitive people encompass that label encompasses a lot of different other labels. So, I believe autistic, the autistic label, everybody who's autistic, I believe is highly sensitive. They have just a different wiring to their neurological system. Gifted label, I believe is also highly sensitive. That doesn't mean that if you are, um, that every highly sensitive person is gifted or autistic, but I believe that the label of highly sensitive person encompasses autism and giftedness and probably other labels that you could, um, you know, label people. But so I wanted to describe what exactly the traits are of a highly sensitive person, what that means exactly, and just talk about it a little bit and get the dialogue opening for people in my circle. Um, and hopefully if you have friends who fit the bill, you can also send them this direction and we can form a community of people who are highly sensitive and trying to get through this world together. And I would love to help kids who are highly sensitive, help the parents understand them, help them find resources for the kids to help make life easier for the whole family and for the kids. Um, I struggled as a highly sensitive kid myself without the understanding from my parents and lots and lots of criticisms and why can't you be different? You should be more this, you should be more that, lots and lots of that. So I wanna help families understand their kids and help the kids feel good, feel high self-esteem and feel like their sensitivity is a positive trait because it really is, it really is. And so my son and I going through it together, we, I try very hard to encourage his sensitivity and I'm, you know, um, very supportive of him because I know what it was like. And so I'd like to help other families do that as well. And in order, you know, doing that um, involves recommendations that I have for books you can read, products that you can use because a lot of highly sensitive people are sensitive to their environments, um, their foods, their, the chemicals in our modern society, the so many things, sounds, pollution, um, what else? Just the EMFs, the, the pollution of the air and the energy fields. Um, so there's a lot of things that we can address and talk about, and I would love to help you understand it more and help you on this path. So highly sensitive, what does it mean to have a highly sensitive, to be a highly sensitive child? So 15 to 20% of the population of humans and probably animals are actually born with a nervous system that is considered highly sensitive. It's just more aware of everything, more quick to react to everything. Um, they grasp subtle changes more quickly. They prefer to reflect deeply before acting. 
they generally behave conscientiously. They're careful. They're easily overwhelmed by high levels of stimulation, sudden changes, and the emotional distress of others, for sure. Animals really upsets my son. Um, so let's see. There's lots of different, I'm reading this off of um, Elaine Aaron's website. I will sit, put the link down below, and I'm going to probably write a blog post about it as well. But there's lots of different intensity levels and different levels of this stuff, but these are the general general things. Um, so actually, I'm putting together a quiz as well for a highly sensitive child, just so you can go through, answer like 20 questions, yes or no questions, and see if you know you fit the bill. It also teaches you while you do the quiz, what are some of the traits. Um, so very oftentimes the kids will be labeled intense, shy. You may not um, know exactly what's going on with them, especially when they're babies. Like my son had, from the moment he was probably four months old, I remember a moment when he was four months old where my friends from my birth month club came together, went out to a restaurant and everybody was, you know, their kids were babies, like four month old, three months old. And we went to a restaurant and it was noisy and I could hear the noise, but I've got coping skills as I'm, you know, aged and I wasn't, I was kind of in denial about my sensitivity. So, um, but the babies, you know, don't yet. And so my son, I, that was the point at which I was like, what is going on? Something is different here. And I didn't know about highly sensitive, highly sensitivity, high sensitivity or anything at that point. But he, um, so he's four months old, we go to a restaurant and he would, I, I ordered my food, but then he would not stop crying. And all the other babies were nursing in their little, you know, their moms were covering them up, they're nursing them. And then they were just falling asleep and putting them over in their little car seat or their stroller or just setting them on their lap while they ate. And I had to leave because he would not settle down. Um, he was crying so loudly and there's nothing I could do to settle him down. And I mean, looking back on that now, now I realize that. Um, and boy, would I have liked to have somebody to help me realize that when I was struggling with that so that I could have seen him differently. Because honestly, I saw him as a, starting at that point, I was just so overwhelmed. I felt like he was, I was a victim of him. Like I did not know what to do sometimes, most of the time, struggling with my own sensitivity and his and just wondering what was wrong with him, right? And that's a horrible, I feel horrible for even saying that, but that's the way that I started feeling um, until I started accepting who he is, you know, and not trying to change him, but, but accepting that he's a highly sensitive kid and helping him find ways to live in this world as a highly sensitive person, to cope in healthy ways, and make the system work for himself and for me, you know? So, I mean, during that story of the restaurant, we left, right? We left, I went home. I started, I think I started crying in the car because I was like, I just want to be supported, you know? I just want to be with some people, some for adults. Because I have this baby who I can't even, you know, get out of the house. So that's what I want to provide. I want to provide a sense of community and help for people who have highly sensitive kids or kids that they don't exactly know what's going on. But I feel like I can be a voice for the kids and to the parents to help understand what might be going on um, with, with the babies and the kids and helping find solutions for that, you know, um, recommendations for books, recommendations for what you can do in your home and when you go out with your kid to help them get through the day, what they can do at school, what kind of support they can receive at school, um, just all sorts of things, what kind of mattresses to use, what kind of, just lots of stuff. So anyway, um, today I'm feeling really passionate about this. I have recently divorced my husband. He just moved out. And so I'm a single mom now, raising my almost 11-year-old, two weeks, um, highly sensitive son who has some other labels as well, autistic, sensory processing disorder. Um, 
that's probably one of them that's also underneath the highly sensitive person label. <laughs> um, and audio auditory processing disorder, lots of disorders, right? Like, so let's switch this high sensitivity to be a positive thing together. Um, yeah, let's do this. All right. So I will, and you can see that I've moved into my new office. It's one of the benefits of divorce. <laughs> um, so I'll talk to you later. Please leave me a comment and please share this. If, I mean, I want to get this out there. I know not that many people see this on Facebook because of the way Facebook runs, but I'm going to post it onto YouTube as well. And please share it. Please connect people with me if you feel at all like they could be helped by somebody who understands what highly sensitive living is like and has done a lot of growth through it and is still growing through it on this journey and can help the kids with all the different things that, you know, that we go through, um, especially talks like detoxing the home Oh man, just so many different things. Detoxing the home, the environment, the food, um, the school situation, everything. All right. Talk to you later. Love you all. Bye.